Hi, I'm Alicia Raimondo, Executive Vice President and Creative Director at Artistic Nail Design, and I wanted to show you guys some wedding looks. This is June. There's a lot of June brides out there getting ready for their weddings, and also um, some really fun bridesmaids like to um, do some really fun stuff for their wedding, too. And I wanted to show you guys a couple different designs um, that if you know you're just starting out and you want to do something a little bit more simple and very quick, or you wanted to do like that really fabulous, um, beautiful 3 3D look on your um, bride. I wanted to show you some different options for that too. So today, if you have any comments or you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to give away some free products today that um, I'm going to be using during um, this uh, tutorial. So if you have any questions, please comment below and we'll be able to answer those for you while I'm working. So the first thing that I wanted to do um, as we get started was just kind of show you, um, I we pulled a bunch of different um, core colors from our collection. We just repackaged our line, so we're super excited about the way everything looks now. It's so beautiful. You can see all of these really beautiful colors. Um, are They're right in your face now. Um, our gel paint on Innovation is now all those beautiful colors are really easy to see. Um, before with the black bottles and the little stripes, people weren't able to see our colors, so now it's just really beautiful, and um, your clients are going to be thinking that you got a new um, line of color when it's those same beautiful colors you've always had. So we pulled some really pretty pinks and light shades. A lot of brides want to just go with something nude and soft. And so um, I just pulled uh, quite a few colors to give you some options. Um, today um, our model decided to go with Elegance. Um, it's a really soft, um, beautiful nude and that's very, very popular for most of your bridal looks and also for your um, bridesmaids. So I'm going to um, polish that out, and I just wanted to show you um, a couple things when um, about our new look to our bottle. Not only do we have a new look, but we also have a new brush inside. So I just kind of wanted to show you the flow and just how the product works. Um, we're going to start with pushing back the cuticle, removing um, any loosened cuticle on the nail plate, and then I just take a 100 and, uh, 180 grit buffer and just take the shine off the natural nail and I've already prepped her nails for you so we spend more time playing art than working on prep so um, I prepped those for you um, and I'm going to use a pH nail prep. So all of the essentials have a new repackaging too right? Yes they do. Um, we have um, all of our essentials um, went into that beautiful new bottle as well. Um, they are all really pretty silver with this really beautiful chrome cap. And um, so our essentials basically consist of our pH nail prep, and then we're gonna move to bonding gel to really hold that product down. This is a patented product that helps the, the adhesion of the color, and that's what's gonna help that 21 days of wear. And then we also have our glossing gel that's in that new packaging. Um, the glossing gel, if you put it over the top and seal the edge, you're gonna get um, that 21 days of no chipping as well. Um, we also have our correction gel and our revived cuticle oil in those beautiful new bottles. So um, it makes it really just the whole um, repackage for our collection just looks really beautiful on your table. And these um, handles, this cap is so comfortable in your hand when you're polishing. And you'll notice um, It'll, it's sometimes hard to tell when you're doing clear, when you're doing base, but the way that that brush like opens up at the cuticle line, when you press down, it goes right up against that cuticle and just pulling straight down, you're able to really get some full coverage. How important is it to use the full line of artistic products? Because you get a lot of questions like, oh, can I use a different brand top and base and artistic um, I never say that it won't work because I don't know, um, but I can guarantee that when you use our base and our top, you're going to get 21 days worth of wear. They're designed, chemically designed to work together, so um, it's, it's a guaranteed, you know, three times longer than normal polish. We're going to put that into the lamp for five seconds. If you're using an art, artistic cure box, you're going to cure for five seconds on that base. Um, you're going to cure 30 seconds if you're just using a regular LED light, or if you're using a UV lamp, you can cure for one minute and get um, 
that same cure on that base. So the next thing I'm going to do is just add um, our elegance. If you want to, you can also take off the inhibition layer um, using uh, just a, a gel brush. I'm just going to use a number seven square right now. And you can just go right over the top of that. This is just a clean, dry brush. And you're just going to kind of go over it. And that's just going to take that kind of slicky layer off the top that inhibition layer, it's gonna kind of spread that out so that your polish sticks. So it's kind of like an ice skating rink when it's wet and shiny, it's a little slippery, and so it just makes your polish kind of grab when it goes on. So I'm using Elegance, and again, really beautiful, soft, nude color. We have so many beautiful nude colors. We just um, launched our wedding collection, so you should see that in stores now at your local distributors. And that has some beautiful nudes um, to choose from. So you can see with this brush, it opens up really nicely at the cuticle line and you can come straight out and it has nice coverage. We have lots of people watching now and we have Christine Miller saying, hi Alicia from Indiana. Hi Christine. We also have a couple people wondering how to learn more and how to become an educator. Um, we always are posting new videos um, all the time on our, um, either on our social media channels, we also, on our website, we have a whole um, section of education where we have videos. I have a little piece of lint right here, so I'm going to try to get that out. Um, so there's always um, new ways. You can also email at, our, at education at artisticnaildesign.com to ask about um, becoming an educator um, for those inquiries. We also have Antonia saying that she loves the new neon dip colors that Artistic has come out with recently. Awesome. We, um, that's the really cool thing about the line too, is that we have everything in Color Revolution, which is our hybrid um, lacquer. And then we also have um, our colors in the dip, our new colors that are launching, they all come in perfect dip as well. So no matter what your client's needing, a little extra strength, or they wanna change their nail color more often, we have um, all three different lines of color to make them happy. Is there one formula that you would prefer over the other for bridal clients or does every? Formula? It's just whatever your bride wants to wear. I mean, a lot of, um, if, you know, she's just wearing her nails for that one, um, for that one day using regular polish is fine. Um, just like the color revolution. Um, if she's, you know, taking these nails on her honeymoon, you might want to go with color gloss. But if she has really thin nails and she wants that extra strength, then I would definitely go with um, a dip shade. And that way she gets the overlay and the color at the same time. We also have a few of our international artistic friends here. We have Ada saying hi from the Netherlands and Danny saying hi from Australia. Awesome. Hey, guys. So would you do two coats of elegance? Yes. Right now, I'm just trying to finish this one coat. I had a little bit of um, cotton from removing her polish earlier on there and those little cotton strands. Um, you guys know, just you wanna murder them. So I got those out of the way and we're gonna go 30 seconds on this cure with Elegance. And you'll notice um, with these new bottles, that really pretty chrome cap, when you put it side by side with the Revolution, you can tell the difference. Um, and just the formulation itself, um, you can see how it's just a nice thin formulation and it drips really nicely. Um, and it's not as thick as what you normally see. And even with that one coat that you saw, it covers really nice just in one coat. So heavily pigmented color, um, you're gonna get great coverage with it. So what's the, what's the benefit of having that thinner formula? Um, one formula, one reason is you, uh, you can take it off easier. That's, um, that saves you a lot of time when your clients come back. Um, it also just makes it look a lot more natural. So many people want that natural look when they're going for gel polish. 
Um, they don't want it to look like an artificial overlay on their natural nails, so you want that really nice, thin formula. So you told us that you're going to do some different bridal looks today. Do you have to be a really experienced nail tech to be getting these nail art looks? No, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques so that you, if you're just starting out and you're just trying to figure out you know, how to do some different um, looks, you'll be able to accomplish these pretty easily. Um, everything's about practice. You know, you kind of have to train your hand um, for what it does so that it can kind of do it on its own and that the only way to do that is just practice, practice, practice. So once you kind of see this technique, maybe watch it a couple times um, and then you'll be able to uh, practice it, do it, you know, three or four times um, a day at least, even if it's on tips in between clients or maybe it's on your clients and you're doing it for free, just to kind of get that rhythmic motion down and then eventually you'll be able to do it very quickly and beautifully. So is that what you would recommend to someone who wants to start getting into bridal nails, is just practicing? Practicing and putting it on tips and putting it, in, you know, on display in their salon so that their clients can see it and they're able to um, just pick it out and point to it and say, this is what, this is what I want um, to wear. And they can see exactly what kind of nail art you can do. So I'm going to put some glossing gel over the top. And again, really pretty packaging with this as well. What do you look for when you are coming up with inspiration for your bridal looks with your bridal clients? Um, I love looking, just kind of hearing like all of their um, ideas um, that they put together for their, their special day. So um, they usually show me their dress, they'll show me their bridesmaids dresses, tell me about their colors. But I really love looking at their cake designs because doing 3D art for, for me is Kind of like cake decorating which I love to do too um, so it just has that same kind of beautiful look um, and when I see something made out of frosting I'm like I know for sure I can make that out of um, out of acrylic product so um, so I like to see their cake um, the cakes also sometimes a lot more simple maybe the dress design has a lot of lace and it has a lot of different elements to it so the cakes are a little bit more simple. They have a more simple design, and the, the really important pieces seem to stand out. And so I love um, wedding designs. They're just so pretty, pretty and soft. We have Carmen saying, I love how smooth the color goes on the nail. Mm -hmm. It really does go on smooth, and a lot of that has to do with not only the thin formulation, the 100% gel formula, but also that suspension gel formulation that keeps that pigment floating throughout the product. So you don't have to kind of mix the product on the nail or shake up the bottle. It's already blended for you, and it works perfectly. So I'm going to take off the inhibition layer with this nail surface cleanser. So we're just going to take um, that off, and we'll go ahead and get started on some nail art. So can you tell us what kind of products you're going to be using for your nail art today? Um, I'm going to use our BIP Artistic White Powder from Rock Hard, our Rock Hard line, and I'm going to do some 3D art, three different types of 3D art. So again, something that's more simple, um, a little bit more difficult, and, so and then one that going to take a little bit of time. Win exactly what you're using today, right? That's what I've been told. Hopefully they'll get, not hopefully, they are going to get this little box for sure. This has um, all your monomer and um, some of the um, powders in it. We're also going to pick the shades that I used today. One of them was Elegance and maybe a couple more shades. I'm also going to use Bride. Um, I'm going to use Bride to do some design work. So I'm going to pick a couple nails to do these designs. So I'm just going to take um, our 100, 180 grit buffer and I'm going to take the shine off the top of the nail. So you can also use this technique to get a matte look on the nail, right? And that's what, that's what I'm going to do right now is just get that really pretty matte look. We also have 
Eleonora saying that she will never forget your teaching. She says, I miss you, my mentor. Aw, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I love teaching. It's always my most favorite thing that I do. There's so many things I do now with the industry, whether it's writing or um, photo shoots and all that stuff. And um, But teaching one-on-one -on -one still is um, my passion. So I wanted to show you a couple different things. One is that matte look, which is really pretty. And you saw how I just did that. I just took that 180 grit side of that buffer and just went over it. That's a pretty look that a lot of brides would like to look at, um, would like to see in their... Um, in their design so you can do that and even washing hands putting on lotion everything is still stays that beautiful matte look so that's what i love about using a buffer for that i'm also going to take bride and put some of that on this palette and then we can paint some designs onto the nail Brush are you gonna use I'm going to use our detail brush. Tao says, love your nail designs, always so delicate and pretty. No. That's just because Tao loves me. No, just kidding. I love doing wedding stuff. I love that really soft and pretty look. Um, so this is kind of one of my favorite things to do. So I'm just doing a little bit of a swirl and it's kind of like that really simple comma and then come back in the other direction. What would you say the benefit of doing nail art with the color gloss is rather than doing it with the color revolution? Oh my gosh, it's you've got more time to play. You can, and if you mess up, you can just take it completely off. You can take it off and start over. So that's really, um, really beneficial when you're, especially when you're first starting out, um, trying to do nail art, um, polish just dries on its own and you're like, oh no, I messed up. And you know, you have to get polish remover and take it off. With, um, with color gloss, you have all the time in the world to play. It never dries until you're done and you put it into the light. And then if you don't like it, you wipe it off and you start over. So. Super simple stuff. We have a question from Danny, and she says, is the matte look open to absorb anything and possibly stain? No, it actually, um, since it already has that glossing gel on it, it has that um, protection on it, and then the matte is just kind of the finished look. So you would think that what she's saying, but it actually really stays really nice and matte and clean and pretty. We also have a comment from Kenya Kenyana saying, love the color and I agree, wedding nails are the best. They are, they're so much fun to do. And it's somebody's really special day, you know, and it's like that one time that, you know, they might let you do something different or um, really go out on a limb and, and do some really pretty nail art. Remember that that's the day that they're getting all of their, their hand shots done with their new ring and so, it really is um, something pretty and special. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that into the lamp and cure that. And that's just, like I said before, like that matte with that color gloss on top. Um, give it 30 seconds. Um, you can go over that with your glossing gel as well and then you get that matte and that shiny. Um, kind of it gives you a little bit of pop with that color on top and then the next nail I'm just going to show you with the gloss um, remember we already put glossing gel on it I'm going to do the same type of design but then we're going to give it a velvet effect afterwards and show you a little bit different of a technique so would that be our like beginner look and this is our yes. intermediate look nope they're both little beginner looks We'll show you the intermediate look in just a second. Uh, we have a question from Casey and she's asking which brush is being used? I love how thin the lines are. This is our um, this is our detail brush. And so are you using glossing gel there? I am. I'm using glossing gel just to go over the top and just to kind of give that little bit of protection to that color and also 
really make it pop, that really nice shine. Let's put that into the lamp for 30 seconds. And remember, if you're using um, a UV light, um, you would go in for two minutes, and then you're just gonna kinda clean that brush a little bit. And then the next nail we're gonna do, and I just did that glossing gel just to add that little bit of height, a little bit of protection, and that extra glossy shine. Um, and we're gonna move into using Artistic White with the next one. That same type of design, but then we're gonna powder over it and show you something really cool that we call a velvet effect. Now, since you're using the VIP Artistic White, could this also be done with, say, a Bride Perfect Dip Powder? Um, you could, actually. Um, you can use any of the um, Perfect Dip Powders for this technique. Do you usually match the bridal party's nails to the bride's nails? Do you have them coordinate at all? Nope. No, that's her special nails on her special day, and um, I think that it should be completely unique and special to her. And if the bridesmaids want to do something on their own and have their nails match, then that's fine. But for me, I think the bride should have her own special nails. Can you let our audience know how they can enter to win the giveaway? Yep, all they have to do is comment, ask a question, um, and they're gonna be entered. So, see how it's just, it's really simple swirls, little dots, like whatever design. Um, I usually will follow um, maybe a lace pattern from the dress. Um, to give it like that really unique look. Did you do your own nails for your wedding? Nope, I didn't. I actually just wore regular polish for my wedding. We're gonna take this, um, where is it at? I'm gonna use my little pusher and I'm gonna put the, now we just did that color, um, that white, which you could use any color if you wanted to really, and you could also use the Perfect Dip powders in whatever color you want, and we're just gonna lightly go over the top of this. Just kind of sprinkle that over, and notice I just put the, the lid right underneath, just to kind of catch all that extra, and um, Different um, people call this different things. Some people call it sugaring. We call it the velvet effect. Usually when you use a clear powder, you can call it sugaring because it kind of gives that little, um, I don't know, that kind of sugar look over the top of candy, like gummy worms and stuff like that. So you can see how that kind of gives that a really 3D effect. And I always do it three times just to make sure that every bit of that color gloss is covered. You kind of see how that looks and then into the light and that's going to cure for 30 seconds and will that velvet effect keep lasting through hand washes and it does it does as crazy as that sounds um what happens is the um the gel polish absorbs all of that powder and it really um it really just kind of stays into one piece so now it's just a 3d piece on your nail so just a different again a different way of getting that 3d look but a very simple way and you can do anything you can put flat hearts you can come up with your own designs follow a design off a dress put her new married name on there there's all kinds of really fun things you can do and you're just going to take a manicure brush and just dust everything off and you can see see how pretty it looks and it just stays right there so really pretty look and then I'm gonna move over um, to this finger and we're gonna do a, um, a simple soft 3d design and I actually want to show you on the table here um, and here's a little form 
So I'm gonna take my brush, and I always use the same brush that I use when I'm doing liquid and powder. I'm gonna so use some nail wipes. Um, this is our number eight oval. I'm actually, um, our liquid and powder brush. This is actually a prototype of some new brushes that we're coming out with soon. So keep your eye out for that. Hopefully this fall, we will be launching um, a new brush collection. Um, and this is actually a piece of it too that we're working on. But um, it's really nice to be able to use the same brush that you're using to create the nails. Um, I use that same brush to create a lot of my 3D art too. Um, just because I get used to how much uh, liquid this holds and so when you're putting the monomer in and you're trying to figure out how much liquid it's holding and picking up a bead um, it really does help to have that consistency so a big container okay so I'm going to use again that artistic white powder now you can't use dip powder for this so bride um, you're not going to be able to use bride um, in the dip powder to do this technique this has to be done with rock hard um, artistic white powder and the artistic white we have that and we also have a bright white the color is going to be exactly the same but the artistic white powder it dries very quickly and it stays very firm so if you're like a competitor and you want or you do smilings really fast you could use that for a french nail but mainly it's for doing 3d art it's for doing artistic types of things and then for your french nails you're going to use the bright white so again, this is artistic white. I'm getting a little bit of monomer. I'm gonna pick up a teeny tiny bit of, um, of powder and you can see it's a teeny, teeny, tiny bead and that's what you're trying to make. And if the bead turns drippy and wet, you wanna go ahead and remove it. Getting the consistency of the beads is really um, what you're trying to do. And you can see on this form, I'm gonna put that down right inside that little square. And you just wanna make that like soft and round little ball. I just got the tip of my brush just slightly wet. And you can see how that made a soft little um, bead. That's one easy way to practice doing any kind of 3D art techniques is taking your brush, creating that little tiny bead, sticking it inside that little box and seeing if you can make them about the same size and consistent. And the more that you make these and, you know, waiting for that client that's late, we all have that little bit of time to just pull out your liquid and powder really fast, place it down, and just try to create three or four beads before she gets there that are very consistent. And that really does help change the game, not only how fast you work, but also how consistent all of those beads can be. So, and remember too, when you're putting them on top of other products that like attracts the like, so plastic to plastic, it's not gonna spread near as much as it does when it's on this form. Um, so anyway, that's a great way to practice and easy way to see your work. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a little bit, that little, same little bead, and I'm gonna place it down. And I'm just gonna drag the center right to the center and create just a little tiny petal. Okay, so all I did was just lean the brush back just a little bit. And I'm gonna take the next one, same size bead. If it seems a little bit wet, go ahead and just touch it to your towel to get some of that liquid out. Your lint-free wipe. And again, kind of drag it a little bit towards the center and then put your brush right in the center of that and open up that petal. And will this stick just fine to the glossing gel? It sticks like glue, you can't hardly get it off. It is like attracts to like, and that plastic attracts to plastic, and those two pieces stick together like glue. Um, you pretty much, if you're trying to pick it off, um, good luck. So it really does stay. Um, a question going back to your last nail art with the sugaring effect. Um, mm -hmm. Antonia is asking, would you put glossing gel back on top over the sugar effect? You can if you want to, but I don't. I like that. That's why we call it the velvet effect, because when you leave it dry like that, it looks really velvety and pretty. 
So you'll notice that last little bead is spread out a little bit more than the other two did. And you know what? That's okay because guess what? It's a flower and um, flowers are all different shapes. No petal is alike. Everything is very natural in nature. So don't, um, don't be really judgmental. I promise when your flower's done, your client will not notice if one petal is slightly larger than the other or one petal is slightly different shape than the other. Just as long as you get them all on there, that's all that matters. And if you do five petals or six petals, just whatever works you're trying to whatever kind of flower you're making. I like to look at, um, for practice, when I'm trying to do flowers, I like to look at drawings of flowers. They're a lot easier to kind of see and follow the lines of, you know, how I want it to look in the end than it is to just look at a photo of flowers. So that's my first flower, and I'm actually just gonna keep going with this. We have lots of people loving these looks so far. Krista Johnson says she loves this. Robert says, so much sugar. I love, love, love doing um, 3D art. It's just, it's so much fun. And once you get the hang of it, it goes really fast. It makes such a dramatic look. And those dramatic looks are what sells your business. So when, you know, people are going to the bank or going to the grocery store or wherever they're going, um, people are looking at their hands and nails. And when you have something that's very dramatic and very beautiful that's standing out, um, that's when, you, you know, they say, hey, those are really beautiful. Who does your nails? And that's really how you grow your business. So practicing techniques, 3D art techniques, um, things like that are really going to help you um, stand out from other people. Would you put a glossing gel back on top of this or just leave it as is with the, with the powder? I love to leave it as is, but you can put glossing gel over the top if you want to. It's really entirely up to you. So if you want to, you can fill this whole finger with, with petals. You could do that on every single nail if that's what your bride wants. Or you could even um, just do it on a couple, you know, a couple nails or maybe just that one special finger that's going to be photographed all day. So it's really up to you. I'm just gonna keep adding petals until I kind of cover this look. And again, practicing those beads really does help make a difference in how fast you're able to work and also how consistent everything comes out. So super important to just practice making beads all the you know when you have the time and are you using the artistic rock hard monomer with this as well yes and you're going to get that in your giveaway um, if you go ahead and comment and or just, feel free to ask a question and just in case someone is just tuning in can you tell us the difference again between the artistic white and the bright white powder that you're using? So Rockheart has two white powders. One is artistic white and one is bright white. The bright white is gonna be for making smile lines and actually building a nail. And then the artistic white is made for like all your 3D work. So I always keep um, some little crystals with me, little Schwartzky crystals in various sizes. Um, depending when you're doing um, crystal work, you may want to um, have little ones for pinky nails and larger ones or even combining the two. So I'm going to take some bonding gel.
I think y'all the best way to adhere crystals. I think so. We have tried um, all kinds of different techniques and um, it seems that bonding gel seems to hold them on the longest. So I'm just going to take um, my sani tongs and drop in my crystals. And again, you can do different sizes of crystals if you want. I'm going to do a couple different sizes here. One's a little bit larger than the other. We have a question from Lisa, and she's saying, would you do all the nails with that same nail art? It's up to your, it's up to your bride, really. I mean, it's kind of like however she feels, um, Whatever she, whatever she wants. Sometimes um, they want a lot of art, so you would just go for it and do it on every nail. But like I said, you could do it on one nail, you could do it on two nails per hand, um, just, you know, whatever your, whatever your bride wants. This one is a little bit more dramatic, but as you can see, it was that same size bead every time. That was what I put on there. Um, and I just made those little petals and now I'm filling in kind of all the gaps with crystals. So again, kind of that intermediate um, type of look, but when it's finished, it really does have a beautiful effect. And let me get one more on there. So would this be our intermediate Look. It is. And again, just a little bit of that bonding gel, just enough to where when you put the stone down, that bonding gel kind of comes up and around that stone. Um, that's what you that's what you want it to to do in order to hold that stone on really nicely. Kind of hook down all those little stones. And then you can just see how really pretty and dramatic that that kind of that design looks. So we're gonna put that into the lamp and we're gonna remember that cures for um, five seconds. And do you put anything over top of that bonding gel to seal it in or is that all it needs? Nope, that's all it needs. And um, what you wanna do is when you're using crystals, so rhinestones are made out of plastic and crystals are made out of glass. So if you're using a rhinestone, you can put a plastic coating or gel, glossing gel over the top and it's gonna look about the same. Um, crystals look completely different when you put um, glossing gel over the top. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep them glass on top so you see all those faucets, you see all that really brilliant shine. So you just want enough bonding gel just to kind of cup over the sides and then we'll hold it into place and just leave it and don't do anything else. So I'm going to take that out and I'll go ahead and grab this other hand. All I would do on any of these nails, um, that first one that we did, I'm going to use a little bit of nail surface cleanser. I would take, I would go over it with nail surface cleanser just to clean off that, um, that glossing gel that we did, the Envision layer. And also over this, I'm just going to go lightly over the top. So any of that bonding gel that may have an Envision layer on it, I go ahead and clean that off too. And then I'm going to move to our more advanced, and this will be our last one. I'm just going to do a rose design. Have Antonia saying that your intermediate design looks like a quilted pillow, soft and puffy. <laughs> awesome. It's so much fun to do um, different ideas. Um, and with brides, it's like anything with crystals and white is always a go. Anything with nude, a little bit of pink, um, you know, whichever, whatever direction they're going with. And then um, throw a bunch of really beautiful either AB crystals or um, clear crystals. And it always is just really beautiful and special. So now I'm going to go with um, a rose design, um, dipping all the way in. I'm going to create a little bit bigger beads for this one. And again, this isn't more difficult. I call it more advanced just because you need to have a little bit more control over your product when you're using um, this. But 
see that bead's a lot bigger and we're gonna be doing different size beads for this. So we're gonna put the first one down. I'm gonna put my brush down towards the center of the rose and I'm gonna lean it back to kind of open up that petal. And it seems like quite a large petal and I really like to make um, some of my art really dramatic. You never know. So I'm gonna dip in again. Get another kind of larger bead. How long do you usually have to work with, um, or how long do you have to work with the artistic white powder before it dries in place and it's set solid? Um, I would say like a minute, minute and a half. So um, the drier it is, the thinner it is, the smaller it is, you have a little bit more working time. If you start getting things really big and thick, it's gonna, it's gonna dry a lot faster because you have a lot of chemical reaction going on. So you kind of see that I'm spreading these petals out and lifting up the corners. That just gives it a little bit more drama. And again, don't try to make anything perfect. Just let it be how it is. Gonna let, go in. I'm gonna make smaller petals now, smaller beads and place it right on the edge. Give it just a second to set up. I'm drying out that, that brush and then I'm just leaving the brush flat. And again, opening up that center bead. And sometimes if the product isn't doing what you want it to do, just give it a second to dry and see how it gets a little bit more. Um, you can make those hard edges, those lines, that's what you want to see. And remember, flowers are always a circle. So when you're creating the edges of your flowers, try to remember to keep that kind of in a circular pattern and then everything will be really pretty in the end. Do you have any general tips for people working with the artistic rock hard liquid and powder that might not be so familiar with it? Um, take a class, um, classes, and, and watch videos, you know, watch other people using it. And it's all about the practice of the ratio of liquid to powder and controlling that bead. Um, so, you know, it just takes practice. Don't get frustrated. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to, to master liquid and powder. Um, but what's you know it's worth doing because it's so much fun and there's so many really fun things that you can do with it we have a few more people joining our stream Jasara says hi and carlette morrison also says hi alicia oh hello hi carlette there's another bead and i'm gonna go kind of in between those um, petals that i just did again just kind of lay that out. And as you get towards the center, you want to keep it a little bit more dry and not flatten out because you want the petals to now stand up towards the center. So I'm just going to let that set a little bit. I'm going to use my brush not so flat, but a little bit more up. And that way I can kind of lift that petal, keep the, the edges of that petal kind of high. And again on the other side. And remember, just let that product just set for a second. Give it a little bit of time. Just in case our viewers don't know, can you tell them what's included in the Rock Hard LMP mini kit that they will get? Oh, there is, um, there's monomer and um, uh, I think 10 nail forms, and then also um, a sample of pink and white um, powder in there. So you'll get a little bit of everything to try. And you can keep going with these petals until you kind of get what you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off with one right in the middle and I'm gonna do like a swirled effect. So I'm gonna add a little bit bigger of a bead right there where I want that to be. And again, wait just a minute for that to settle. I'm gonna bring my brush to a really sharp point. I'm 
I'm gonna stab it right in the middle and open up that bead. And as I do that, it kinda looks like a little donut at first. So I'm gonna go in there and kinda start going in a circle. And remember, straight up and down because you want that petal to keep standing. So straight up and down in a circle. And I keep going and going and going and going and going until it opens up. And eventually that little circle, it'll break somewhere. And when it does, take advantage of that break and you turn it in on itself. So my break's right there. So I'm going to clean my brush. See where it broke. I'm going to take that and turn it in on itself. And that's how you get that little curly cue in the middle of your rows. We also have a question from Carlette, and she's asking, can you do the same technique with putty? You can. You absolutely can. I love that question. You can do the same technique with putty. Um, it's really a drier product, so it's really um, easy to work with. Um, so it's um, you would have to do the same thing, do the one petal, cure it, go in, do another one. Um, so that the petals didn't stick together, but yes, you can absolutely do it. And there's, I've seen techniques and I've tried it. I'm not the best at it, but I can do it. Um, some of our educators can do it where they create one with one bead. They can go around with their brush in a circle and keep going and going and going and actually create the rosette in one bead. And you can do that with, um, with putty and you don't have to cure in between. So that's really cool. So I'm just going to get that little, I really like to focus on the center of that rose because that's what really stands out when this is finished. Just in case we have some viewers that just joined us and didn't see the beginning, could you tell us again about how great those new color glass bottles are? <laughs> They really are great. Um, my favorite part about them is just that you can see all the new colors, um, all the colors that we've always had. Now they're just right in your face. They're so pretty. And um, the best part of this new repackage really for me is that brush. 440 laser cut Italian hairs open up right at that cuticle line. It makes it so easy um, to get that cuticle line nice and clean. Um, it's just, makes polishing out just a whole lot um, smoother, faster, and easier. So there's your rose. If you wanted to add a little bit more, um, you could add another rose or add some little um, rosettes in the corners. But I think that that really big, pretty, um, that big, pretty rose there, and then maybe you could add another one over here on this finger, um, add a couple crystals on it if you wanted to. Um, there's a lot of different options that you could do to really, you know, make that stand out. But um, it's that simple. Uh, you don't have to put any top coat on it. Um, you can if you want to. I'm just going to add a couple. Actually, you know what? I'll do one little. I think they said I've got a couple more minutes. So you can add one little rosette on here. So I love to have more than one and then these are really easy to do too I just take that add that guy right there give him just a second to dry to set up just a little bit and again exactly what you did there just poke a hole in it and I like to put the base of that right in that corner kind of bring it up a hole right in the side, open it up, and just throw a little kind of rosette right there in the in the corner, and then you have your little rosebud as well. So Antonia has a good idea. She says you could also use a stone in the center, perhaps one of the color for the bride's wedding. You can. That's a great idea. Um, I'm, I'm just going to use this little, uh, my little detail brush just to kind of open that up just a little bit more. Since the tip of this brush is a little bit hard, a little bit big for that. And just, again, just like turn that in on itself. 
There's so many amazing things you can do um, with wedding nails, and as long as your client is um, game to try some different things, um, it's also um, you know good to kind of work with her maybe even before her big day, um, show her some different designs that you've come up with according to things that she has um, that she's shown you with her with her dress and her cake and everything else and um, maybe discuss that prior to her coming in on that special day or maybe even practice a couple on her before then and see what she likes best. But that's it. So you can kind of see all the different designs. And again, even incorporating those together. Maybe you want to do some swirls and some dots and a little sugaring um, on some nails and then do like a really big pretty flower, a couple stones. There's so many things you can do, so many nice looks that you can create, um, whatever your skill level is, either um, just doing some soft little swirls or all the way up to doing 3D art. Either way, just practice, 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 have fun. Um, you're, hopefully you guys have commented and you're able to get a chance to win some products to help you um, create these designs and um, it's just all about keeping your options open and giving yourself the opportunity to learn different techniques so we try to bring that to you here at Artistic Nail Design all the time I'm trying to show you different techniques things that are easy and fun and fast and quick to do that'll help you grow your business and um, make more money in the salon so thanks so much for joining us today and um, I hope to see you again and we'll definitely keep sending you guys some new um, interesting ideas and things to help you make more money.